The wind done scattered. Snow has frizzed me. Sun has baked me. Looks like between them they done tried to make me stop living, stop laughing, stop loving. But I don't care. I'm still here. Part of the measure of leadership is what you do while you're there. But in many ways, a more important part of leadership is who you inspired. She's been a mentor to me. She's been a mentor to so many of us in the room. And it's amazing how you never know, Mayor, the way in which the, the ground we till today could produce the fruit our children eat tomorrow. She was a new mayor, and um, she came and visited my students, and the impact that that had on my students on the north side of Minneapolis, they'll never forget. But the encouragement that she gave me to continue to be a champion and to make sure that public education worked for everybody, I carry that with myself today. Um, and we're really at a critical point in education right now where we have to do better. Um, and we're hoping today that we can really converse and come up with some really good strategies to make sure that education is working for every child. If there's anything the mayor has done, and we heard this morning, is get to know the people most affected by the situation. It matters to have representation at the table. We're very unrepresented. In most cities, most states, you're unrepresented. But it means a lot to have the representation because then who best know what you go through that can bring it to the table from your standpoint, for your people. You come to realize that we're not all united, that we're, all, that we're a lot of us, but not necessarily all voters. Um, and we sometimes lack of the identity that we have power, whether we vote or not, to voice our opinions. So how do we become a stronger voice so, we can, um, so others can see us? in those roles in the future. What qualifies a person to me is that their sincerity to serve and to have a heart for the community. You gotta have strong local uh, level leadership. And once you have the strong local level, you can move to the state and you can move to the national level. And so it's very important that we start, we get out and we research, we do the background, we, we start voter registration polls, we educate them, we teach them how to run for office. But you got to have strong leadership, and that strong leadership has to be like Belton, someone that's strong on the ground, someone that knows what the city needs. They see what the city needs. They get out and they move it forward. I hope to walk in the very shoes that Mayor uh, Belton has walked in to be great in the destiny God has put before me. It was our first black mayor of Minneapolis. She was our first woman mayor of Minneapolis. She was a spectacular mayor of Minneapolis. We're talking about leadership in, in public safety, instrumental in reversing serious rates of crime to the lowest levels in 34 years. Uh, the mayor made critical investments in the revitalization of Minneapolis neighborhoods and communities, restoring pride and confidence in the citizens. Mayor Sharon Seals Belton rallied public support for the Minneapolis Public School and Minneapolis Public Library referendums. She strengthened downtown Minneapolis as a financial center. At the end of her term, it resulted in an increased tax base by 84%. That's a real statistic. And the creation and preservation of over 43,000 jobs. She's always held the people of Minneapolis at the center of her mission. Uh, and when she left uh, office, uh, she left a true legacy. And what I really want you to know is that very early on in my career, I found support. I found support and I found answers in our institutions of higher education in our community. And we are lucky in Minneapolis and St. Paul to be surrounded by many. Nobody ever has accomplishments like the ones we've been talking about today by themselves. You know? These are all collective efforts and everybody plays a role. From the small group of people who came together in the focus groups, you know, to the students that we talked to in different uh, sections of the city, every one of them had played a role in shaping, you know, the strategy and the vision for what we were gonna do going forward. And I owe all of them, all of you, uh, a, a, a debt of gratitude. So thank you very much for that. All I'm trying to say is, I think we're in a moment now that demands action. 
I think we're in a moment now that our children and grandchildren are going to look at us and say, what did you do? Like the whole, like all this divisiveness, all this hate, all of this just fear. What did you do? And we are all going to owe our children, just like my parents and my grandparents owed me an answer for where were you during Freedom Summer? What did you do? We are going to owe our children an accounting for our time for our energy, for our words, for our actions right now. Mayor Belton made history. People told me when I got sworn in that I made history. We have an opportunity to make the future. And I would submit that that's the far more important thing that we can do. I stand here as part of the future that Mayor Belton helped to create. And the only question I think for us right now, you know, we're, we're gonna celebrate the past and we're gonna acknowledge and honor your legacy, Mayor Belton. And as that track person who I, I've learned that when, when, when somebody brings me a, a, a baton, we call it the stick. When somebody brings you the stick, the way you honor them is not by stopping and turning around and telling them how great they just ran. It's by taking that stick and charging forward into the future. And the question for us now, the way we honor Mayor Belton isn't just with a bronze bust in City Hall. It isn't just with a luncheon. The way we honor Mayor Belton is by paying her legacy forward, not just focus on the, few, the history, the, the, the history that's already been created, but focused on the future that we must create together.